This interview between Michael and Pearl is quite crazy. Marriage, divorce, prenups, it goes in so many different directions. Let's go ahead and get into this. Do you think men have valid fears in getting married? Do you think any of it's valid or do you think they're making it up? Yeah, I think that marriage entails risk. Okay, course. okay. But there are ways so, to mitigate risk. Th there are and it's ways, a natural correct, institution correct. that Correct, there are, there are ways to involved. mitigate risk. Yeah. But... Like, because I don't know, when you talk about this stuff, it, you guys are just, <laughs> not, sorry, I don't mean to say you guys, but. Please, but some, Re generalize, sorry, sorry. it's okay. But sometimes I'm just like, how do you not see where the men are coming from? You know, I've talked to men that did the exact same thing, that they, they, they took you guys' advice to a T. What's our advice? Our advice is okay, just to, uh, to marry. I, I've seen married. a lot of stuff from the Daily Wire. Yeah. Okay, might be you, might be other guys that say get married young, right? Yeah, it's good. To sign up. <laughs> okay. But I'll see guys that, that take you guys' advice. And it, sometimes, you know, it ruins their life. Because they get divorced. And it, no. Yeah, and, and the divorce isn't like the woman ruins their reputation. Mm -hmm. You know, calls him an abuser. You know, and even, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, calls him an abuser, says all these awful things. You know, he hasn't seen his kids in two years. We can always look at it from the standpoint of something can happen to you. Yes, there can be a divorce. Yes, you can lose money. Yes, the custody things will be tough. There's nobody trying to agree with that. What we are trying to say, though, is that it shouldn't be pushed that marriage should not happen. I had spoken about this in a rant not too long ago when I had, was talking about Steve Harvey. OK, and there was a lot of people coming out saying marriage isn't worth it and all those things because this kind of stuff can happen. Right. In any circumstance. Right. And my argument is always, yes, can marriage go the wrong way? Can there be divorces? Can there be all these other things? And can you lose a lot of things? Absolutely. But that does not mean we have to encourage men not to get married. Once again, we have to encourage men to be prudent. We need men to be careful. We need men to look into this and be like, okay, let me make sure I'm vetting the right woman. We need to do these things. However, I do not think the solution is just don't get married. What I am saying is men ought to do the right thing. That uh, at, the, at the basis of the natural law is, is one precept, which is do good and avoid evil. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we apprehend is, is being, right, is okay. existence. Uh, the next thing that we apprehend, and this is the first thing we apprehend through our practical reason, you know, mm -hmm. which is oriented toward action, mm -hmm. is good. Doing, when, okay. when you do something, you want to do good and you want to avoid evil. And so what I'm saying is, that marriage and family, the end of marriage being the begetting and education of children and secondarily mm -hmm. the, the mutual support of the spouses, is good for man. So I, I'm not saying this isn't Michael's crazy yeah. view. I'm saying this is a natural part. It's why this has existed throughout all of human society mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's why we are all inclined to do it. Mm -hmm. Whether or do not you, Pearl or you, Michael wants okay, it. Okay, so do you think it's wrong if a man wants to build a business? And he Dep doesn't, depends he what doesn't, the business is. He does, okay, okay, but whatever. It, for, and instead of pursuing women, he pursues his business. I instead of that, pursuing a marriage and a family. I think it would be a mistake for a man to uh, pursue material good uh, to the exclusion of better goods. Okay, what about coaching? What about teaching? Like, why? Well, I, think, I think our jobs in the commercial economy are good things, but right. I think modern liberalism and individual uh, uh, anthropologies uh, make an idol out of that, and that is to the harm of men. Now, before I continue, when we start getting into how Pearl feels about women, I want to say this it's about marrying young. So I do encourage men, I have encouraged men, that if you want to have more options, yes, go ahead and get married later in life. But even sometimes I'm hesitant to say that because marriage is not about having all the options. I think sometimes as men in the red pill movement, we get caught up in the whole, well, you know, you need, you want to get the finest, the bestest, the most traditional woman. And you can only do that by getting your money up. However, I think sometimes we miss the point of marriage. It is a union. It is sacrificial. It's not about getting your money up just to get a prenup. If you, if you're being called to marriage and you come across a woman who's ready for marriage, don't, because I I, I I discourage men to just date, just to date. So if I tell a man, go ahead and get your money up, I always encourage don't date. I know that sounds silly, but if you're dating with no purpose of marriage in the end, you're wasting women's time. And I would never encourage a man to date a woman just to not have marriage in mind at all. So if you're going to wait to do that, then you're going to also have to wait to date. 
So it, I'm telling you, either way is going to be a sacrifice. Yes, you'll have less options while you're there, but you still get to build with the woman and create a family. All that option stuff goes out the window. You won't care. But if you're that guy, the guy says, I want to be financially completely stable and I want to also be able to pick from a better litter. Fine. But that doesn't mean you get the date and waste other people's time. OK, now we need to go ahead and talk about how Pearl feels about women which I completely disagree with. I am very adamant about how I talk about OnlyFans and all these things, but Pearl has a very, very unique take on it. Are you denying the principle that uh, people can change? Yeah, I mean, God can forgive you, but men don't have to. I'm I don't, not I don't think it's... I'm not talking about, I'm talking about say, repentance. I wouldn't, repentance is good, but I wouldn't say that makes her wife worthy if you still used to have an OF account. You, you would agree that men <laughs> in general... Yeah. Should not date women that had OnlyFans accounts. It's not ideal. But okay, it's, I don't but think it's you can't definitively. You can't definitively so. say that a woman. Okay, I don't think it's disqualified. I mean, well, because, I just uh, I think you're going to have a tough time selling guys on that. I'm not convinced of it. I mean, you know, uh, to quote Saint John Vianney, the saints didn't all start well, but they all ended well. So I, I wouldn't recommend that I, people uh, get involved in porn in any way. Okay. But uh, there's also, you know, on the men's side of things, men are in a little rough shape because of our modern culture too. Mm -hmm. A lot are addicted to porn. A lot have hooked up with a lot of people. A lot of kind of indulged perversions and things like that. Mm -hmm. doesn't make them particularly marriageable either. But it why, is it, why is it whenever we say something about the women, we have to say but men? Well, be, because it's an observable fact, and marriage involves men and women. I know, but I'm all I said, all I'm saying, you know, Michael, all I'm saying yeah. is, don't date. Like it's just crazy sometimes. I just I, I get so curious because I say, yeah. men shouldn't date women that used to have OnlyFans. Like well, that that yeah. shouldn't even be an argument. Uh, that yeah, should I don't be know. Like a, I I don't know. I mean, again, it's not ideal you, to have. You a, wouldn't date a woman with an OnlyFans. All right, let's break this down. So one of the things that that's tough with Pearl. And I understand you're going into a debate with a person who talks this way and has been in this world for a while. So I understand, Pearl, it's hard to go into a debate with somebody who's good at it. However, let me say this. Sometimes I feel like Pearl gets caught up in parroting what she's heard so many other Red Pill guys say, especially Kevin Samuels. She goes into the, why is it when we talk about women, we also have to mention men. She's so used to saying that, that she is not having any self-awareness in this situation, it would be fine for you to bring up men as well because y'all are having a conversation about marriage. As Michael says, marriage involves a man and a woman. This is not a discussion about women. This is a discussion about marriage. That is the overarching argument going on. It's the whole video is based off of marriage. So she's so used to it being just a woman's discussion. Let's talk about women that she's not used to having to bring men into it. And you should bring men into it. When we're talking about marriage, we have to talk about both sides. So my point in saying all that is, look, should a man date a woman who's done OnlyFans? I would also say the same thing. Am I going to tell a man that that's the way you should go? That's the best option you can do? No. However, am I saying that a woman who's done OnlyFans and decided to change her entire life should just be barren and never be in a marriage? No. OK, there is a thing that does come with repentance, right? Does, a man doesn't have to choose her. And that is fair. But do I think that she should be doomed to never getting married? No. Do I think her options have changed? Yes. There's consequences to our actions. If I decide to go be a felon and rob a bank. Guess what? Certain jobs I'll never be able to get. Certain women will not date me because I'm a felon. That is what it is. But am I irredeemable because I'm a felon? I should never get married. I should never have a job. No. But does that mean my options have changed? Yes. And I'll be grateful for what I can now get. OK, that's all we're saying. I'm not saying a woman can't get somebody if they did OnlyFans. But however, their options will be have been lowered down. I'm going to briefly break this down. Pearl is arguing that all women should be 100% responsible for whatever choice they make. So if they chose OnlyFans, they chose to be a single mother, they chose divorce, they chose sex before marriage, it's 100% on the woman. Michael's going to argue that feminism or their environment or their education system may have pushed them in a certain direction. Pearl disagrees with that. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'm not, I'm not saying that women aren't culpable when they do bad things. But what, what I'm saying is that men share some of this culpability because they're the ones consuming it. No, I, I think everyone's responsible for their own choices. And I think that includes women. And the more we coddle women and right. say, oh, you poor thing, it was the men. 
oh, you were lied to by feminism. Oh, the, everything's everyone else's fault. That's why you have these women at 35 that act like entitled brats. No, no, no. But you know, <laughs> but I, I guess this is this is why I'm suggesting yeah. that like the, the view oh, I'm articulating. You might you might get a husband after only fan. No, I, no one's suggesting that that would be yeah. particularly easy. Right. But I guess the reason I'm I'm suggesting what would be probably the conservative or traditional or Christian view right. of marriage and the sexes, and the reason that I'm describing yours, and I yeah. take it the red pills view of marriage and the sexes as being liberal and individualist and feminist, is is because of well what you just said. You said everyone is totally responsible for their own choices, and that. That do you think not, people aren't responsible for their own choices? I think that our wills are conditioned by our environments and our education and public life because we're a social creature who lives in community with others. So how do you explain people making completely different choices in the exact... I know siblings. You know, there's, I know, I know siblings where one ends up doing yeah. one... Yeah, I mean, come on, you know. Right. With like, you, have, you have a couple kids, don't you? Yes. Yeah, they're different. Two and a half, I suppose. <laughs> they have one on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, congrats. Thank you. Um, you know, people are different and they make different choices. So are you saying people aren't con conditioned in, in their will by their environments? That's what, that's what an extreme liberal would say. And maybe you, that's what you believe, but I don't believe No, that. no, I, I think, I really know what that, what that means, but. <laughs> meaning, meaning, are, are we affected? If you grow up in a really bad community where you're taught all sorts of bad things, where you're where you're introduced to drugs and porn and gluttony and just all this nasty stuff yeah. around, are you uh, more likely to fall into bad vices and habits and temptations? You're, you're more likely, but you're still responsible for your decisions. You are 100% responsible for the choices that you make. Sure. If a man chooses, you know, there, there are men that grow up in bad environments that choose to be millionaires, and there's others that choose to be drug dealers. And there's some who choose there's, to be millionaires and fail. So there's an... There's an what you seem to be describing is is a real primacy of the will, of the mm -hmm. individual will. And I'm saying that free will obviously exists, mm -hmm. but it's conditioned by other factors. Why, why is okay. it that do marriage you, is collapsing? Is, you, is everyone just of their own free will, just totally absent environmental concerns? Because women, uh, want, to, because because women to want to leave. Because when women got the choice to get money instead of have a father in the home, right. women have chosen to take so the money. So I think you've just proven my point, though. Even if what you just said is true, you're mm -hmm. saying that a political and social condition changed the way that human beings, that women, the, no, uh, it, exercise their free will. It changed the incentives, but that didn't mean women had to take it. But and it so changed the way not, they it's not, it. But it's not the government's fault. It's women's fault for making that choice. Right. It's not, but, it's not society's fault. It's women's fault. It's it's the person's fault for making, everybody is responsible for their but, own But had the social condition and the law not changed, Women would not have made those choices. In well, you would numbers. be you would be surprised, actually. I, th I thought that's men, what you just said. I thought you just said that the reason. No, the majority. Yeah. No, no, okay. I didn't say the reason. I said it was because women it started wanted then. to. No, I said it was because women wanted to. Women wanted women, to. Women, women have chosen. And it chosen. just coincidentally, they they all of a sudden women, decided they wanted to when the women, law changed. Women, women chose. Well, they wanted to before that. I mean, they fought they for fifty years for abortion. So I, I'm saying when people, okay. We could go back and forth about what I want to do, what you want to do. All I look is at what people do. No, I'm not. I'm not. So I'm not talking about your individual desires. At all. I'm talking about desire itself and the relation of, of desire to. Mm -hmm. you, you seem to be saying that uh, people exercise their free will in something like a vacuum, you know, and therefore they bear all of the moral responsibility. And I'm saying that we're a social creature, and there's there's more to it than that. Do, do you? I'm just confused. Do you think you're responsible for the choices you make? I think I, I am a moral agent, I bear moral responsibility, and that my ability to exercise my will is conditioned by my environment. So is the responsibility 100% on the women, or is the responsibility on the men, or is the responsibility somewhere in the middle? That is the main point of this entire interview. If you go back and watch it, two hours and 23 minutes, that is what comes up almost the entire time. So my question is, can women be shaped by their environment? Can they be shaped by what they have been doing to make them who they are? And the answer is absolutely yes. Women can be shaped by how they grew up. If they grew up with a single mother, okay, their life is going to be different. If they grew up with a single mother in a non-Christian home, yes, their life is going to be different. If they grew up in a two-parent household, in a Christian home, that's going to be different. A two-parent household, non-Christian, it's going to be different. The, my point is, 
is that if a woman decides she grows up, she's 18 years old, she decides she's going to sell her body online. Her environment had to have taught her in a certain way. Now, the argument that Pearl likes to make is that, yes, she could have grew up in a Christian home, a Catholic home. She could have grew up in the best place, two parent household. They had great times. In 18, she still decides to sell her body. Yes, that can absolutely happen. But how likely is that to happen? See, when we deal in the world of possibility and probability, that's where problems come up. The problem I think that Pearl is having is that her thing is, yeah, but it can still happen. No matter what, no matter how they grew up, yeah, but she still chose that. Okay, yes, but her environment made her go that way. If you grow up with parents who are doing drugs right in front of you every single day, are there some kids who are going to choose to do drugs? Yes. Are there kids who are going to choose not to do drugs? Yes, but the chance of them doing drugs would be probably higher if they watched their parents do drugs versus the household that never saw their parents do drugs, okay? Those statistics matter, but the problem is, and the reason we're not even talking statistics at all, is because any time statistics got mentioned in this interview, Pearl immediately smacks them down if they don't agree with what she says. Go back and watch. Anytime statistics get brought up, Pearl will say, well, that doesn't matter for people who are 35 and under. She goes back to that so many times. But if a statistic favors her, she'll go, she'll run with it. But anytime Michael brings it up, she's like, well, but that's not 35 and under. It's like, you only use numbers when they matter. And then she'll say, facts don't matter about your feelings. Now that doesn't make it. She'll say that. And then she'll go right back to, well, actually, the women feel this way. Women feel that way. When Michael mentions what should men do, if they're not going to get married, they're not going to do all these things. What should they do? Pearl says, well, your facts don't care about your religion. Fine. Okay. That's fair. When Michael asked that question, Pearl goes right to, well, you should go to your priest. You should go to your pastor. But you just said facts don't matter. Facts don't care about your religion. So why would you tell a man to go to his priest, his pastor or a preacher? if facts don't care about your feelings. She is very contradictory, this entire thing. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say it wasn't frustrating to listen to her because she, it is, it's not that I, I'm not a fan of Pearl, but I did listen to this interview completely non biased. I, all I heard, all I heard was two voices. I wasn't watching the video, I was listening through it, listening to it um, through my headphones. So all I could hear was two voices, couldn't see faces, reactions, nothing. And what I could see is you have a person on this side who so vehemently disagrees with women today. It's all, and I'm just being honest here. It's almost like she hates women. And I'm not saying that as a joke, as a laugh, as a, <laughs> this is Pearl for you. No, I, it's, if you were just listening to this and you did not know who Pearl was, you would think this is a woman who does not like women. It almost sounds like she hates women because at no point in this interview, does she even give any women any redeeming qualities, any redeeming chance? If you did OnlyFans, you're done. If you got divorced, you're done. If you were a single mother, you're done. She makes women seem to be that if women are given the choice between peace and happiness or evil and chaos, she makes it seem, you go listen yourself, that women almost at 100% rate would always pick to be evil and cause chaos. I, I never heard her say that women tend to choose peace or happiness or any of that. She only says if women are given the option, pretty much, they're going to choose the wrong one. They're going to choose the path that hurts men the most because women just love to hate men. They just do. And no, nothing inherent, nothing about feminism. They inherently in their soul, women as just being a woman, you immediately hate Men, you want to see women destroyed. I mean, you want to see men destroyed. You want to see men have all their money taken. And your whole purpose is to get a man who makes money and take it from them. Like, I don't see, and I listen to this. I listen to this entire thing and try my best to pick out what Pearl says positive about women. And I mean, she never comes out and says, well, you know what? I think women can be this and be great and be amazing. It's pretty much, nope, give women the choice. They'll F it up. And so I don't really understand what her point and purpose is anymore. Her purpose, she makes it seems as her entire job and her entire life is to protect men. But anytime Michael tries to bring up when well, you're telling men not to get married, what else would you have men do? 
And she says, follow God and find their purpose. But when Michael says, but a man's purpose can be to have a family and a wife, she immediately goes to, well, change the laws. Okay. So a man shouldn't get married until the laws are changed. And she's pretty much like, yes. And so it's just like, okay, well, then a lot of men are going to die alone because the laws are going to take a while to come into effect. And he also goes to mention that the some people don't want to see more families that are in politics or right, politicians. They don't want to see families. You're making it seem as if family is the main priority of America. And it's just not. Individualism is what drives our society. So if it, 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 the, the chances of the laws being changed to create more families, less consumerism, and have families who actually stand up and go against some of these policies, do you think that makes sense for them to do that? No. So Pearl, you're almost telling men, if the laws don't get changed, die alone and just have sex with women, have kids, but just don't get married. And I just think that is not a way to live. Now, if you want to go back and watch this and listen to the the Catholic version of this, the uh, Catholicism and all that, I suggest you go watch it. I'm also Catholic myself, so there's some things that Pearl would say that me and Michael would vehemently disagree with, but I don't think Pearl is a practicing Catholic. I'm not saying she is or not. Based off this interview, I would say she has been out of the Catholic Church for a while because the way she talks is if, if she's a red pill woman who completely disregards religion. She even says that in there, talking about how she doesn't agree with the Catholic Church on this and this and that. And so I don't know. Based off what I heard, I don't think she really rocks with the Catholic faith anymore. So if you want to hear that, go check out the interview. But I wanted to hit these main four points to say pretty much to say all this. Pearl. <laughs> Boy, she's lost, man. And I, when I say she's lost, I mean, she's lost in the sauce. She completely disregards women in any, any, any environmental causes or anything that can cause women to think the way they do. She really believes. And I, I, I have I used to think she did this for money. But the more I've watched her, I really, truly believe that she dislikes women as a whole. Any woman who is pretty and attractive, Pearl just takes them off. And also, Pearl also talks about so much about the reason men don't get with women is because women are fat. I can't tell you. Go watch it. How many times she says women are fat. Women need to lose weight. Women are fat. Get on the treadmill. When she goes back to this whole thing, it's like she is projecting because as far as I know, she is still not married. Well, she's not married. But as far as I know, I don't know she's dating anybody. And it she would be a hard person to live with because she sounds like she hates women so bad that there's like it, it, it'd be hard for her to get married. And she is career driven. Pearl, I, I've said this before. I really hope one day you can see the error of your ways, but you're so caught up in your ego. You're so caught up in this money. You're so caught up in being popular. You're so caught up in being controversial. You're so caught up in this new world of fame that you have met, have found that you have completely lost any sense of self. And I'm hoping you can find your way back. Please go check out this interview. It is quite lengthy, but it is a great interview if you really want to see how Pearl thinks. This is the best interview I've seen her do where you really... Got to see how she thinks. Anyway, I'm gone.